Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to strengthen the Achilles tendon for running and why doing calf raises and basic stretches probably isn't enough. You may have heard of Achilles tendonitis or Achilles tendinopathy, which is a diagnosis for Achilles pain and associated weakness. When runners are given a diagnosis like this, they often come across a very basic set of exercises, something like this, of basic stretches and strength exercises that often don't really cut it for actually getting a runner back to full function. What no one is talking about here is that we need an entry point to rehab with some basic exercises, but we need an exit point of rehab with much more intense exercises and much higher loads than we're typically prescribing for people in rehab to actually get back to full function and having a good strong Achilles tendon. In this video, we're gonna talk about both points. We're gonna talk about how to find your entry point and what exercises are good whenever you're just starting out, and then how to find a good exit point of what you wanna actually aim for with real high loads that are really gonna build you a strong and robust tendon that can handle running. Instead of just giving you three exercises for the Achilles tendon, I'm gonna tell you exactly when you should be doing them and with how much load and how to progress them so that way you can actually get back to full function. And as a runner dealing with these issues before going to physical therapy and learning about the research, this is information that I had a really hard time finding, so hopefully this video is really helpful for you. Okay, so to lay the groundwork, everyone is gonna have to have an entry point and an exit point of rehab, and the standard course of therapy probably looks something like this, where we're barely progressing from our entry point to our exit point a few weeks later. A lot of times, we're just doing some basic calf raise exercises, maybe progressing from a double leg calf raise to a single leg calf raise, but even that might not be high enough load to really get back to full function. What we know from the current research is that to actually meaningfully improve tendon properties, we need loads in excess of 70% of maximal force contraction and probably in excess of 90%. What this means is that we need very heavy loads to really get to a good exit point of rehab where we're not only past our symptom recovery and in zero out of 10 pain, but also to full function and can handle the high demands of running. So if you're a runner, you probably don't need the standard course of rehab here. Your course of rehab needs to get you to a much higher point. When we're trying to find our starting point, there's a lot of different exercises that we can choose. Based on your individual pain experience and your load tolerance and your training habits, you may need a starting point that's at level one, two, or three here. So we're gonna give you three options. An example of a fairly easy or low level one starting point would be something like a seated double leg calf raise. This is just gonna get that ankle moving and starting to tolerate range of motion and a little tiny bit of load. A more moderate starting point would be something like a double leg calf raise on flat ground. If you have insertional Achilles tendon pain where your pain is very close to the heel, it may be a good idea to start on level ground and not work all the way into a deficit. A double leg isometric hold where you're just holding a calf raise position without moving up and down could also be a good moderate starting point. For other people who are in less pain and maybe tolerate higher loads, a more aggressive starting point might be something like a double leg calf raise going all the way into a deficit or even a single leg calf raise if it's well tolerated. An important point to mention here is that this is just an entry point of loading and is probably not gonna significantly improve tendon properties. We know that we're gonna need to progress to higher loads to actually start to build a robust tendon and get back to running. I typically do not recommend doing plyometrics or calf stretches at this point because that could actually just further irritate symptoms and keep you in this pain loop. Now let's talk about the exit point that we want to get you to and then we can talk about what exercises can help you bridge the gap from where you're starting to where you need to get to. Current research is showing us that to build strong and robust tendons, we probably need to use a lot higher loads than are typically being used in standard courses of therapy. This means that for a runner who's trying to get back to full function beyond just symptomatic recovery and really build a strong and robust tendon, we probably want to get to very heavy isometric exercises, for example, with 90% maximal force. You may be familiar with the double leg calf raise machine, and this is the example we're gonna to use to show you just how high of loads we want to target as our exit point. For me, if I'm doing 10 to 15 reps on this machine, I might set that at 175 to 190 pounds as someone with a strong, healthy tendon, but even that load is probably nowhere close to enough to actually build a strong Achilles tendon. If I'm using this machine to preferentially train the Achilles tendon, I'm gonna load that way heavier than what I can actually do for full range of motion reps and just do a very heavy isometric hold for about five to maybe 10 seconds. 
This type of load is very challenging to hold for even 10 seconds and really puts a lot of strain through the tendon. Of course, you have to build up to this point, but this is the point that I really needed to get to to actually build a strong and robust Achilles tendon that no longer keeps getting back into this pain cycle. And a standard course of therapy never told me this and never got me to this point. But we know from the research, looking at hundreds of participants doing Achilles tendon rehab, that even 70% load, such as 200, 300 pounds, isn't enough to fully build the tendon properties that we need to actually build a strong and robust tendon. We need very heavy loads. So knowing that that's the point that we want to get to and knowing our entry point, how do we actually build progressions so that we can get to that point? We need to progress two different things here as we move from our starting point to our exit point. We need to progress the magnitude of load, meaning the amount of load that we're taking through that tendon. For example, progressing from a double leg to a single leg calf raise. That would essentially double the magnitude of load. That's one way that we need to progress. We also need to progress the duration of load that we can handle. Meaning that if we started with three sets of 10 seconds isometrics, we need to progress that to four sets of 10 seconds, then five sets of 10 seconds, or add a second exercise. This is why we don't just stick with three sets of 10 over and over again, week after week, unless you want a flat line here and to not really achieve full function. And you may be wondering when you can add plyometrics into this. A lot of people will recommend low load pogo hops early on, but this is a bad idea if you do it too quickly because it's essentially just replicating the demands of running that you're trying to reduce. Repetitive low load stress is actually the cycle that could have led you to this pain and stress in the first place, so we don't wanna add more repetitive low load stress. I think pogo hops are great and they can be added, but they're essentially just a way to control the amount of loading that we're getting in different stages of rehab. So we don't wanna just throw in three sets of 20 pogo hops week one, week two, week three, week four, because again, that's a flat line here. There's no progress. And that could actually just be adding to the stress that you're experiencing. Instead, we want to slowly introduce plyometrics over time as you can tolerate them, and again, make sure they're progressive. This is different for everyone, so without individually seeing you, I can't say what plyometrics you should add and when. Just be careful not to add them too soon because it can just add to the stress that you're already experiencing with the same demand. Overall, be progressive with your program and target a higher exit point that is beyond just symptomatic recovery and actually will get you back to full function. There's a large body of research over the past two decades to show that tendons do respond to high loads to increase stiffness and strength, leading to improved running economy, reduced risk of tendon damage, and improved run times. Subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.